there's lots of storage units in my storage capacity. Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody. You can unmute yourself because we're going to just chat a little bit this morning. And let's start out with who's here. Melissa. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because I don't know you. <laughs> I know. I so uh, and I'm sorry I'm not showing my face. I'm actually like getting ready while I have my so I'm not I'm not presentable yet, but I will be. No worries. Um, I am I have been I'm on Paul Nicolick's team. Okay. And I have been full time now for about a month. Okay. Where did you so, come from? What did you do? <laughs> well, Janine, I actually you and I have a lot in common. I've actually Wait. been in the beauty industry for about 25 years oh my gosh yeah um and i um also am a ballet teacher well that so i don't I have in common with you teaching on monday nights but um i'm not really doing much makeup anymore okay. um i worked on michigan avenue for about 18 years and have lived in wisconsin now for about 11 years so you and, know i just i just put an age on myself so whatever <laughs> And how did you meet Paul? Paul sold us our house. That's that's how I met Jay. Yeah, and so um, I went to real estate school in Chicago about fifteen years, but fifteen years ago. But I never took my test. I just okay. got too freaked out. So it was always yep. kind of something that I wanted to do. Really, since I was little, I've always very much been into homes. Um, and then. When COVID happened, we closed uh, the dance studio that I was directing for seven years. Wow. And then obviously we weren't, I was a regional makeup artist for Chanel for seven years. So obviously there was no makeup and I was like, okay, so what am I going to do? Right. So I called Paul and I was like, what do you think about, you know, me doing this? And he's like, I think it's great. We're opening a new office and I'm starting a team. So let's go. Yeah. That's so then crazy. I tried to, um, I know I tried to work. I was actually part-time managing the role North shore for like the past, I don't know, since August while trying to kind of slowly get into real estate. And then I was like, you know what? I either need to like, you know what, or get off the pot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now it's been a, <laughs> and now it's been a month that I've been full-time. So, you know, slow going. What's your biggest takeaway from your first month in the business? Um, lead gen is everything. Lead gen is everything. Yep. And how are you doing that? Um, you know, Paul is great because he gives us obviously many tools. Um, but also, you know, I asked like, what, what do I really need to focus on? What do I need to work on before, you know, you really feel like you can kind of throw me to the wolves. And he's like, just, you know, knowing, understanding contracts, mm -hmm. all that stuff. So, um, I have one buyer with an FHA loan. So we know how that, we know how that's going. Mm hmm um, mm -hmm. so just, you know, trying to get out there and really just, um, kind of nurture the relationships that I have and just kind of stay in front of people and stay relevant. Good. Awesome. Well, nice meeting you. Yeah, let's you go too. To, <laughs> let's go to Charlie. Hello. Hello, Charlie. Tell us about yourself, Charlie. Uh, so I graduated from college last spring, so recent college grad kind of went right into this industry um, with the style a team in their admin role so i was doing that up until like early mid-february maybe and then okay. decided to make the switch into sales so i've been doing this for about six weeks seven weeks now oh are you on the style a team yeah I am. okay so how is that transition working for you uh, good, not terribly easy. It was, I mean, it's nice just because being in the admin role, I got used to it so much, you know, I yeah. knew the lingo knew kind of how everything operated, but 
kind of working to get your own clients isn't <laughs> as easy as they make it seem just because, yeah. you know, every, everyone's so established and cruising along and it's challenging to get yeah. your, you know, get off the ground. And just remember Agreed. that they were brand new too. And yeah. it's going to yeah. take some time. Don't get discouraged. Just keep yeah. plugging along. It's nice just to have, even if you're on a team or not, just to have so many people to talk to and kind of get different perspectives. Like I've talked, I've basically interviewed so many people, like what did you do in your first six months? And I've gotten mm -hmm. so much response that kind of dip my toes in each of their suggestions and seeing what's working. Great. And are you from Whitefish Bay? I'm from Mequon. Mequon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to college? University of Dayton. Good school. I was born there, so I can say that. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm going to go across here. Um, Natalie. Is Natalie here? Yes. Hi. <laughs> Natalie, tell us Hi. about yourself. Hi. Uh, so I graduated from the University of Utah about two years ago. I'm from Shorewood, but um, okay. I went out to Utah to get a ballet and psychology degree, or two degrees, I guess. Um, wow. <laughs> and Meet Melissa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, we'll have to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and so I'm still a contemporary dancer, but um, since COVID has completely messed up the arts world, I was like, I need to figure out another thing to do. And I've always kind of been interested in real estate. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, might as well give that a shot. Um, I know Annie Jerzyk. And so I've been working with her very closely. And she's like, I mean, from that face, like, you know who she is. She's like, on top of it she's crazy yeah. so um, awesome yeah she's been really great to work with and I've been doing open houses with her and whatever and so um yeah it's been it's been really interesting but like everyone has been saying like it's hard to get started but yep. especially right now you know yeah um so but, yeah so like you're saying, are you just, are you on Annie's team or you're just kind of just working, working with her got mm -hmm. it Got it. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> welcome. Um, I'm just going to go down because some of these people on here I know. Um, let's see. Caitlin Werner. Are you there? Caitlin. Betsy. Hi. Oh, sorry. Hi. Hi, Hi Betsy. I can. Um... So, Share my okay, name. wait, okay, wait, <laughs> there's Betsy. Betsy, tell us about yourself. Um, hello, hello, um, I'm Betsy. Hello, hello. I am from Tosa, went to UW-Madison undergrad and law school, um, lived in Chicago and San Diego after law school, working at law firms, hating it. <clears throat> um, made a big life change in 2013, quit my job at my law firm, cashed in all of my savings and retirement. I was single at the time, so I could be reckless. Um, to open the barcode studio um, in the third ward on Water Street. And then about 18 months after that, opened one on um, Blue Mound in Brookfield. Mm -hmm. Those are still up and running. I'm still owner, operator, instructor, toilet cleaner, <laughs> et cetera. Um, I've shifted a lot of my day-to-day -day tasks to my team of managers um, so that I could focus on real estate full-time starting in January. Um, three kids live in Elm Grove. Wow. Three girls, five, three, and one. Oh my gosh, Betsy, you sound like someone from our team. She has four. Um, are you on a team? Are you solo? I'm solo. Okay. And so heavily on Bridget. Oh, we call ourselves Bridget. the team. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to mark it that way though. <laughs> That's interesting. Can you tell us maybe one takeaway that you have since you started real estate? 
Oh, wow. I know, I'm sure. Um, just listening and learning to everyone, um, fellow agents, clients, uh, and paying attention to all the details and absorbing every single thing you can. Okay. My takeaway. That's a good one. Um, Caitlin. Yes, Werner. sorry. <laughs> no, Werner with an A. Yes, I always, I used to actually get Werner and I'm like, nope, it's an A. <laughs> um, I've been married for 33 years. I, I mispronounced my last name. So, no worries. little thing about me. So tell us about yourself. Um, I'm actually from the Manitowoc area. So about two hours north of here. Um, okay. I moved to Milwaukee for college. So that was over 10 years ago now. Um, <laughs> been in Milwaukee ever since. Um, I went to school for architecture, so I've always kind of been interested in the business. Um, when I graduated was kind of when it wasn't great for that sector of the area. So um, I actually ended up in landscaping and then in the corporate um, world, which I'm currently now in. I'm trying to manage between the two, um, but not loving it. That's why I jumped yeah. back into real estate. Okay. Um, so I've been in a couple weeks now, just learning and trying to be a sponge and getting all the info I can. Where do you live, Caitlin? I'm uh, just by Mount Mary in oh. Milwaukee. Great area. Yep. Great area. So you've been in a couple weeks now. Any takeaway that you have so far? Um, I'd agree with everyone that it's kind of slow going and just kind of doing what you can to get your name out there. Mm -hmm. um, I Amanda was actually my realtor she bought helped me buy my house so she's been a, a huge help to me um, but yeah I'm personally I'm kind of struggling with trying to get my name out there but also trying to keep a little bit quiet because I don't want my coworkers <laughs> to know <laughs> yeah yeah so, I was in your shoes I get that yeah it's like a a, a struggle between the balance of the two but we'll get mm -hmm. there. okay I get you Okay. Um, Andrew Peterson, are you here? Yes, I am. I uh, have a baby in my arms, so response time is a little delayed. It's okay, Andrew. <laughs> okay. Andrew, tell us about yourself. Yeah, so I, um, so I guess, yeah, I had, um, well, what was your name? It was, uh, was it Colin or Connor? Um, was on a team as an admin guy, uh, Charlie. There we are. Charlie. Yeah. Um, uh, my story is not dissimilar from Charlie's. I, uh, fresh out of grad school, ended up getting a job with a Keller Williams agent down in Florida uh, as oh. his admin guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Long story short, um, he originally was planning on building a team, but ended up getting an opportunity to jump up the corporate ladder. He's now an OP, but he. Okay. Uh, because of that, he got less involved in the real estate itself. And so he ended up laying me off. And I mean, you know, it, it, it made financial sense. I'm not going to begrudge him that. But, uh, but I remember at family reunion uh, this year, they had a graph that keeps on popping up. And it's the distribution of income and how it's affecting housing rates and so on and uh, by age group. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm at the bottom, <laughs> near the bottom of that age group. And so, you know, they, they, they showed how so few of us are getting houses because so few of us are getting decent jobs. And that's been my situation for okay. almost four years. And okay. I eventually got sick of asking people for a job and decided, you know what, may as well just do it myself. Good for you. So how long have you been a licensed agent here in the state of Wisconsin? Um, about two months-ish. Okay. Okay. And how's it going? You have a baby in your arm, so. Yes. Yep. That's uh, our little one. My wife and I had uh, Teresa six months ago. Six months ago today, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been going iffy. I mean, I, um, I tend to be really, really, really analytical. And so part of my problem is just analysis paralysis. Um, mm -hmm. I've talked, I've talked to Diana about that. She's, she's been very helpful with that because, uh, she kind of has the same tendency. 
but uh yeah i've got a plan together it's just a matter of uh executing it. it um i'm gonna be trying to go after for sale by owners because uh, that, that's that's what my boss did when you know back when i was an admin guy he he did for sale by owners and expired so figured i'd at least start with what i know and yeah. branch out from there do you have any sphere here or how did you end up here um, my there? wife is from the area so there's a there's a homeschool group that i can kind of get connected with but okay um that's that's going to take some effort because honestly i know like 10 people up here <laughs> yeah yeah um and where do you live do you live lake Country wales. Area? pardon wales just outside oh, of Delafield. Okay, yep okay all right good to know andrew well thank you for yeah. sharing eduardo i see your names here i don't know are you here okay um bridget i'm gonna add okay hi hun how's it going i'm bridget i started in november i had done recruiting before this um i'm a solo and i live in tosa and i kind of have been all over the place um just because my sphere is all over the place so i've been getting to know all the areas it's been fun where did you grow up bridget i grew up in, in pewaukee oh in pewaukee okay mm -hmm. all right so you started in november i know you've been slaying it how many transactions have you do you have under your belt right now six six okay so tell this beautiful group of people who are new agents how in the heck did that happen bridget honestly i was really penetrating my sphere i'm at a good point in my life because all my husband's friends are buying their first home and all of my friends are maybe like moving on to their home forever home after their five-year home i'm just a Few years older than my husband I'm a cougar um Woo! but what what I would do that kind of helped is I felt like most of my friends like wanted to buy a house but they didn't really know how and I one thing that really helped me get a few of my friends to start the process was I would just send them a home like I would text them a home and be like oh my gosh we need to be on this patio this summer like you guys really should be buying a house. And they'd be like, we were thinking about it. Like, and that helped me get a couple people going. That's um, an awesome idea. I also have Cribs with Bridge, <laughs> which is so dumb. <laughs> but Wait, what is that? On my Instagram, I, I am 100% fake it till you make it. Yeah. And I am on my Instagram, Insta stories going to like go and show properties that I know are really cool like Janine's million dollar listing that you had on in Whitefish Bay the flipped home on Sylvan oh, Sylvan yeah and I am like walking through the house to like rap music and stuff it helped mostly get me in front of people to remind them constantly that I'm a realtor without being like are you looking to refinance? Like it, that's just not me. Yeah. Right. It was more like fun and everyone loves to see homes. Yes. The inside of people's homes. So that helped a lot. And people would reply and be like, how much is this one? We're thinking about it. And, or we're thinking about buying or just little things. So basically like I tried to have a lot of social media presence. I tried to target friends that I knew we're maybe thinking about buying or should be buying. And like all of a sudden we were hanging out with my husband's friends a lot more and inviting them over for dinner. And because they're always going to ask how, how's the new job? And it just came up really naturally. So yeah, fake it till you make it is my game plan. And Bridget, you, you have children, right? Yes. 
how do you manage your calendar then without really having a set schedule? How do you manage your day? Because there's several of you on this, this phone call right now or the Zoom. What, what's your schedule like? I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old and we have no child care. So what I've been doing is one day a week, I decided I need a nanny because one day a week, I just need my thoughts to myself, go to the office, meet people, set up coffees with other realtors, um, and just kind of like hear what other people are talking about has been really helpful. And then a lot of, you know, nights and weekends is kind of when I just like tap into my work. Um, it has been difficult with the my schedule because all of a sudden like <laughs> he needs a different show. I, um, all of a sudden on like a Sunday, I'll get an accepted offer. And then we got the inspection Tuesday. I have no child care. Then we need a follow-up chimney inspection on Wednesday. So I'm fortunate that um, I've been able to like kind of piece it together. Um, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it's like a hundred percent working and I think I'm going to need to like maybe figure something else out. No. Well, you've been doing a great job maneuvering um, just because I've been watching you very closely. So good job. And those are really great ideas of, I like how you're using your social media and going into the going show. That's awesome. And I love it that you're tuning into other agents and having coffee with them to learn and um, get to know other agents. I think that is amazing. You're going to learn a lot from, from others. So great Yay. ideas. Thank you. Um, hey, Janine. Hey, yeah. Hi, Connie. I love the idea of sending random houses to your friends. I think that is, that is fabulous. Brilliant. Yeah, I know. Nice touch Let's have cocktails on the deck. Like you need this house. Awkward. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's a great idea. I am. I'm having some takeaways just from conversations. So if you're feeling yeah. stuck, listen to what other people are doing and, um, and copy them. Um, Leanne, I know you're there, girl. Hi. Yep. I'm here. Um, <laughs> hi everybody. I'm, I'm learning lots of new things and people that I need to know. So this is great, but I am a part of the Jay Schmidt group. Um, and I, came on end of October, beginning of November. Um, so I'm new. And what I can say is that the time is different. Just, you know, it's not even been six months yet and the market was different then um, than it is now. But what I've done is, you know, I've learned to pace myself. I've really taken in um, a lot of the things KW has as far as trainings, Productivity has helped a lot. Um, I started right away with that. Um, right now, I'm about six or seven transactions in. Um, and I don't have a large sphere. So with my group, we have an ISA lead, which has been tremendous to my success so far um, in getting me started. And I don't know what else would you like me to talk about, Janine? Um, eight under contract. Let's eight under contract. Yes, she does. Leanne, you have oh. eight under contract, girl. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is your? I, I guess one thing that you can share your biggest takeaway from just being a newer agent that you would love to share with the other new agents on this class in this class. <sighs> I would just say really, you know, you don't have to have a sphere. You don't have to have all these things. It's really, you know, what you're comfortable doing. If you're not comfortable doing cold calls, don't do it because you're going to be successful at what you're comfortable at. So if social media is your thing, do that full out. Um, you know, if cold calls work for you, great. If you have a sphere, work it, but don't be discouraged by not knowing enough people or, um, 
you know, not getting sales right away. Things are going to come to you. And after the exam, you don't really, you don't know anything until you you get in there and start doing the work. Cause I'm learning a lot now. Um, so contracts, true. you know, nothing's the same. You're going to keep learning things as long as you're in this business. Um, and you may come into things, you know, come across things that people who have been agents for 10 years have never come across. So, um, you know, just, just take all the education things that you can, um, take notes, um, use your social media. If that works for you, it works great for me, Instagram, Facebook. That's where I've gotten a lot of my, um, sphere and leads on my own. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just pacing yourself, not being too hard on yourself starting out because it's, do you have a schedule, Leanne? Like, how do you manage your week? Because that's kind of what we're. Yeah, truthfully, um, I'm still working on that. <laughs> um, so, because things change, but, you know, I try to, every morning I take a look at, you know, the clients that I have under my belt right now, new homes, you know, sending those out. Um, I don't have children, so I I do have that flexibility at this right now, um, as far as like inspections and things like that, but I make sure I go to my trainings. So I make sure I'm at productivity unless I have an inspection or something every Thursday. Um, I make sure that I'm on all of the team meetings because those are very important. Um, and then I just make sure everything's on a calendar. So don't try to remember anything because you'll forget. <laughs> I've tried that too or writing things down, have one solidified notebook that you can kind of write your dates and deadlines in or appointments or little jot things down in case you forget. And then make sure you put it in a calendar because dates and deadlines are important if you don't have like a agent partner to help you stay on track. Those are the main things you wanna look at and make sure you're following. Perfect, thank you. <laughs> Um, Paula, unmute you. Oh, can't hear you. There you go. All right, Paula, tell us about yourself. Oh, can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, excellent. Oh, okay. mm, it's very raspy. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Uh, um, sorry about that. Um, no. Um, I've been in real estate for almost two years um, in June. Um, prior to that, I was um, in management in the medical field for like 12 years. Um, and my first year wasn't too good. I probably had four transactions closed. And my second year, I had 16. So it definitely, yes, it got a lot better. Um, my first half of the year was not good at all. And then my second half got definitely better. Um, I am still, I don't consider myself a seasoned agent. I don't consider myself as someone that has everything done perfectly. Um, I definitely keep learning and I love to take classes, you know, whenever I have time. Um, I am crazy. I have probably have like 10 buyers right now. So it's kind of hard to um, get, you know, like uh, showings with them and all of that, but I try my best and, um, and I really appreciate everybody's uh, commenting on, you know, what you're doing. So when you went from four transactions one year to 16 the next, what was the change? What was the difference? What was happening? What did um, you do? So I, I try to communicate better with my sphere. Um, it, it doesn't, it didn't work out very good for me. Um, there's something, something is going on. I don't know. So I think some people have, uh, are very lucky that, 
they, uh, their friends and family want to work with them. Um, I actually had a very, very close uh, friend of mine that I worked with for 10 or 12 years and she didn't even use me. Um, so I don't know, like, and she, and she loves me. Like, it's not that she doesn't love me. It's just that I, there's something, I don't know what it is. I don't know if she doesn't want me to know her finances. I don't know if she doesn't want me to know her personal life, even though I know everything about it. So it's kind of hard to gauge why people don't want to use me is it because they're jealous, you know, and they're seeing all my success. Like, I really don't know. Um, so I, I could probably come up with four transactions that I could have had because they were my friends, you know, and I don't have family here, but my parents. So I, I can't really speak for that, but I, um, I had to, you know, like I actually moved to a different team. Um, they were providing leads, you know, and that's how I just got my business rolling. And now okay. I'm getting referrals from those leads, but you know, I still try and keep track of like, you know, tabs with my, my friends and my, you know, the people that I know, and hopefully, you know, I can get business through there. So I do, I would say like 5% of my business comes from people that I know and the rest just comes from leads. Okay. That's good. And it's always going to happen where someone that, you know, friend, whatever coworker, past coworker is going to choose to work with someone else. Don't let it grate on you. Just next, there are lots of other people, whatever their reason is. And, you know, it's happened to me. Believe me, I, I don't hold on to it. It's mm -hmm. really not about me. So just next and find someone else that will. But it, yeah, those, those types of things you're going to run into, everyone is. Everyone is. So, yeah. 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 So just move on. Move on. And I think you've done a really great job. Thank you. Really good job. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Welcome. Britain. Is Britain there? Or is that Lake Country? No, that's Connie. Never mind. I'm Britain. All I right. do have five people here, though, if we could um, tap into them a little bit. Yeah. Do they just want to come in front of the... Yeah. 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 Come on up. We'll take you one at a time. Nobody's jumping? Come on, Nick. <laughs> go, Nick. Go, Nick. Go. They're on the screen. You are on the oh, screen. Oh, there we go. Hi, there. Nick Jensen. Uh, been in since August. Before that, I did property management. I've pretty much been in some form of real estate for the last 15 years. Um, site management, uh, yeah, property management, that kind of stuff. Um, I've had two transactions so far. Um, and yeah, my, I have, how many buyers do I have now? I think I have, yeah, I, have like, I have like five buyers and one listing that I'm co-listing with uh, Gallagher, Gallagher Lake Country here. And yeah, my been pretty much all sphere. Um, I, tr I have a lot of contacts through the school and through the church that my, you know, that my family attends. Uh, I have four kids, so I know a lot of the parents at the school. Um, I coach baseball too for most of my kids. I've done that. So I use, you know, a lot of contacts through that. Um, so far, no takers. But, you know, we're coming into summer baseball, be more active and school hasn't been very active. So I kind of have a less contact with the parents that way. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Awesome. So your two transactions that you've had are through your sphere? Yes. Okay. And that will just continue to grow um, as the longer that you're in the business and to be really mindful and use your sphere database um, to encourage new business. And so you're gonna learn yeah. from some people on here of how they're doing that. So, well, congratulations and welcome. Thanks. Karen, come on. Start in the back of the room. <laughs> Karen's coming up. Boys first. Okay. Boys first. <laughs> so, um, I started about five months ago. I think, yeah, October, um, I have one transaction under my belt. 
Um, yeah, listening. I know. Uh, I think your name. I'm sorry. What is your name? Uh, Garen Horowitz. Oh, okay. Got it. And how did you get into the business? What made you decide to get into real estate? Uh, I have a cousin in North Dakota who works with Keller Williams. So I just oh. didn't really know what I was doing. I mean, I, I just got out of high school and like, try this. Awesome. I, so what does your calendar look like, Gary? And how do you manage your time? Um, not well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good um, answer. I, I probably, I, I'll, I'll probably spend four days out of the week. I'll probably have like an hour, hour and a half where I'm actively trying to contact my sphere. Um, most of the time is just trying to bring something value to everyone I talk to. Um, mm -hmm. Then I... Good. go to a training or something um i've been spending a lot of time looking at like the hot sheet and getting more knowledgeable about the market um try to spend some time being active but i, I i'm pretty much all over the place right now okay well, we'll we'll help you with that thank you gary yeah welcome garen garen coco garen. Right there. Hi, <laughs> uh, my name's Corinne Wallach and my nickname is Coco, given to me by my niece who couldn't say my name. So it's kind of stuck for about 25 years. Um, I come from the wine world. I was a sommelier, owned a wine bar in Oconomowoc, from Scottsdale originally, Arizona. And I live in Oconomowoc now. Uh, I was a psalm for a restaurant in town. And I decided to make a career change. Everybody that I know was like, you should get into real estate. You should get into real estate. Your personality, you do great. And so I am doing that. I've been an agent for two months. I have many buyers and I feel like I'm hunting unicorns for them, <laughs> but it's been fun. I spend, um, I have, a, I, I love my calendar. I'm great organized. Um, I spend a lot of time doing the trainings as many as I can do. I want to learn it all. I want to be confident. Um, I have great support with all my colleagues and they're, they've just been so helpful. And I spent a lot of time reaching out to a lot of the people that I knew from when I owned the bar. And it's been fun to reconnect with them. And um, I'm having a great time with this and I'm looking forward to selling something to one of my buyers. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I look forward to working with all of you. Awesome. Thank Come you. Thank you. Yep. Two more. Hi, I'm Laura. Um, I've been with Keller Williams now just over a year. I started right when the pandemic started. Um, I am working on my fourth and fifth transaction right now, uh, closing on one April 30th and hopefully the other one in May. We've got some title issues that we're trying to work out. Um, I own two other companies. Uh, I've got a landscape company, snow plowing and lawn mowing, which keeps the crew busy. We got a crew of 12. And then I also have a landscape yard. So my schedule right now is kind of crazy. I try to devote Tuesdays and Thursdays to real estate and then evenings um, around my kids' schedules. So. So you're on a roll. How were you able to um, get your current clients? Where did they come from? Pardon? Through my sphere. Through your sphere. Okay. And how did that happen? I mean, what was the conversation? Did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? Did, was it through no. just networking? Yeah. Kind of give I us a detail. To, I've been reaching out to everybody. I've got, I mean, I'm still reaching out to everybody. I'm on the phone all the time. So okay. You know, during the winter, I've got a lot of windshield time uh, traveling around. So I'm on the phone driving. I'm that person that's constantly talking to somebody <laughs> behind okay. the wheel. So you're using that time to network. 
and lead generate. That's awesome. Well, congratulations on your success. Okay. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bethany. Hi, Bethany. Oh, yeah, I know you too. <laughs> So I've been probably full time a year. I was, I joined in October two years ago and then really didn't do anything um, because it, I was working another job. My job, since I've been in high school, I work at like health clubs and gyms and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I was tiptoeing into it, trying to, to learn everything, which is impossible to do only twice a week. <laughs> so when COVID hit um, and my club got shut down, it gave me the kick in the butt to do this full time. So I have that as my part time job. And I keep that um, for the connections, lots of people, things like that. And um, I'm doing this full time. So luckily, I had made some connections and I had my first um, transaction right in the midst of COVID from uh, some lesson. Um, family that I know. And then I just kind of, I'm five in, I almost had six, but my client couldn't uh, prove his um, American citizenship. <laughs> oh, no. yes. Yeah, because the offices in Chicago were closed. And so we had to back out of that offer. So um, oh. I'm working on it. I have a ton of buyers, but um, I can't find them anything. So we're just kind of on the hunting a lot. So, yeah, Bethany, you've been working it, I know, extremely hard. Um, what is maybe a piece of advice you can give some of these newer agents in today's class? Um, I, I like try to volunteer for open houses as much as I can. Yes, um, <laughs> with anybody and everybody and anywhere, I don't care, I'm going. Um, if I can go, I'm gonna go. If I can do two a day, I go. Um, you just never know. And then whenever I do an open house, I always do a Facebook live video, um, like a tour of the home. Cause people like to look at homes. I actually got a buyer off of one of Jay Schmidt's listings by doing a video. Um, cause one of my coworkers was like, Oh my gosh, I love that house. How much is it? And it's like, well, it's like 800,000. She's like, Oh, whoa, way out of our price range. I'm like, Oh, are you looking? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, well then let me help you. And that was my third transaction. Just wow. weirdly enough, like that, you just never know, you know. Um, I try to, um, I live downtown in the third ward, but I grew up and raised my kids out in Lake Country. So I'm the city and country girl. Um, and I do things in both areas and I will drive wherever I need to drive. <laughs> Yep. And I will try to do showings for people because the more you can get into houses and meet people and talk to them, the better practice you have and the more you learn. And um, like Bridget said, sometimes you fake it to make it. It's like, that's how you practice, you know, just talking to people. And I must say, you have been very, very persistent in a terrific way about okay. asking our team for any open house opportunities. And yes, I, I have your, I have Elizabeth on my phone and I'm always yep. reaching out and like bugging her and she will at the last minute, um, be like, oh my gosh, can you help on this open house? And I'm like, I will rearrange everything to do it if I can, you know, yes. I know I live across the street from Kyle, the photographer. Um, so, you know, we're always talking that. about that too. Yeah. So, and I have, yeah, I, I like to do. I don't like to do cold, I'm not a cold caller. No, that's not my thing. I like to meet people. I like to do events. I have an event this Sunday, which I'm hoping is gonna generate a lot of contacts because part of my challenge is from my past career of 30 something years with um, clients and coworkers, they don't see me as a realtor and they forget that I'm doing this. Like I was doing note cards yesterday and I reached out to an, a coworker, a young lady to ask for her current address and we got to talking and everything and she's like oh I got my puppy but I need to get a you know move because I want to move out to like a house with my puppy has somewhere to run around I'm like oh you're looking to rent or buy oh I want to buy I'm like well why aren't I helping you and she's like I totally forgot you were a real estate agent so I have a meeting with her on Friday because she has not signed an agreement with the one agent that she saw one house with I'm like and that she said she didn't like I'm like you like me. 
what the heck? <laughs> yeah, so. you know, we have to be bolder about our our conversations. And yeah. I'm not a cold caller either, you guys. But you know what? I have a mindset of it's a warm call. I am always going to have something to contribute when I call them. And I'm just checking in to see how they're doing. And it's then it, it goes into a real estate, maybe. Um, but just kind of maybe have a different mindset of cold calling in general. I, I call my database and very um, mindful of the amount of time that I want to talk. And it will get your real estate one way or another. And if you just keep doing that on a regular basis, you're going to, you are going to get leads and transactions, but it's, right. I think it's our mindset. You have to be patient. It's hard to be patient. <laughs> yes. Um, hi, Jay. Uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, fine. Hey, Janine, like do you have... I've been looking and I cannot find, do you remember when I first started? You had that weekly schedule. It was, it was a black, black sheet of a, it, it looked like an appointment book of the week. Yeah, a calendar blank. Yeah, the blank every calendar. Day. Yeah. yeah. Can you send that to me? Yes, I can send I, that to you. I know I have it somewhere and I can't find it. I've been looking for it. So I'm gonna give it yeah, to everybody. Absolutely. Yeah, I have that. And I literally will, and I still do it. I, I get my calendar out every single Sunday and I fill out my weekly calendar. It's usually filled in already for me <laughs> at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, I make sure I get me time in there and I'm really protective of that. And then I fill in everything else, but I will get that over to you. Um, I think what we need to talk about is when you first start out in the business, the number one thing is it's going to take longer than you think. Mm -hmm. I was in the mindset it was going to come really quickly because I knew people and all of that. And it didn't. It took me a good six months to get rolling. Um, but I had a schedule that I adhered to every single day. I was in the office and I am in the office every single day, Monday through Friday. If, if it's very unlikely that I will work from home because I get very distracted. Um, sometimes I just need to, um, but that is few and far between. And if I'm not here, somebody will say, is everything okay? So um, I am here and that is a habit. I have to get up, dress up, show up, in the office. So, so how long did it take for you to get your first transaction, Janine? I think I had in my first six months, uh, maybe one or two. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent that time getting my database together, doing every single open house I would do for a weekend. So I would do 1130 to one and then 130 to three Saturday and Sunday. I would do anything for anybody. I would go and do their inspections at no charge. I would show properties at no charge because I considered that part of my training and I needed to learn. Otherwise, I, I don't want to practice on my clients. We call that malpractice. So um, I took every single opportunity and there was a lot. Um, and I, I just did it because I knew that it was going to pay off later and I would be a better agent. And, uh, so I did it for free. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, it's harder now because a, we have fewer open houses because of the lack of inventory. Uh, I would take anything I could get. I was cheap, <laughs> but, uh, but that's how I, you learn and that's how you pick up, you know? experience yep. buyers and sellers and you know work seven days a week I, I seven days a week without fail mm -hmm. and I would come home exhausted and so on and so forth but I I knew that if I stuck with it it was going to pay off and I was just going to keep focused it was a passion if it's your passion 
it's going to pay off and you're not going to think about all the time that you're putting into it. Um, but it has to be smart time, not dumb time. Mm -hmm. I don't just come to the office and look around. I have a, I have a method of my day. Um, it's also going to take more money than you think. You're not going to be making money right away. Right, Connie? Like how long were you in before you did your first transaction? I started March 1st and March and April, I was transitioning from hair into houses. So I worked both jobs, lost a lot of weight. It was really good, <laughs> but you know, just trying to fit everything in as much as I could. And then um, in June, I had three closings. So I started off after four months with three closings, but I, I worked it hard. And then yeah. what I found out, which I really needed to work on, you get so involved with working on those transactions that you don't do anything for lead gen. So then I would have two months of nothing and then two closings and then a month of nothing and then a closing because you just get so wrapped up and you don't stick to your schedule when you're overwhelmed by other things. So right. I found that I had to keep my schedule and I just had that weekly, that weekly schedule that I really, really tried to stick with. And it was checking the hot sheet first thing in the morning without fail, um, sending them to everybody who I was working with, and then even picking a property and doing something on social media, whether it was um, change the batteries in your smoke detector or you know just doing something on social media with that but really keeping that schedule and it's a lot of the things that you don't think people see but it's kind of hitting them in the back of their head instead of slapping them in the face and so yeah. all of a sudden they would just start kind of calling and say hey can you help my kid you're looking for a house I saw that you just some sold somebody their first house my kid's making too much money they need to buy something yeah great and I started with a lot of little things, you know, the hundred thousand somethings, um, because it, it was my friend's kids that they were dealing with. All of my friends were kind of stable and not to the point of upselling or downselling at that point in time, but I took everything. So my first year, I think my average sale was like 250, which is a lot of work. And now, yeah. now she can't find anything for 250. <laughs> Right. At least out here. And we have a lot of buyers, but it's, it, you know, it's one of those things. But I find that, and that's why Janine and I wanted to really reiterate the schedule and showing up at the office is great. But what are you doing when you get to the office? Right. And I always have that mindset is, you know, it's not what's in it for me when I'm, when I was new, like what's in it for me if I do this, it's everything is in it for me. I'm going to learn and grow. And um, I didn't care what it was. If it was, can I throw a lockbox on for you? You know, uh, someone at the market center. Um, can I do a final walkthrough if you can't for your client? I would do anything and everything. And I would take copious notes and I would just feel comfortable with that part of the procedure. Because when it came to me and my client, I'm going to feel more confident. So be, get out there and ask these agents in the market center, how can I help you? I want to, I want to help you out and I want to learn. I'm telling you that's going to resonate. And if how you show up in the office is how you're showing up out in the real world. So, um, you, you know, I always say you can fake it until you make it, but you're right. I, acted as though I was a million dollar real estate agent when I did not have one bit of business. I acted as if I was already selling, you know, millions of dollars worth of real estate. So I'm going to act like I already am. And so what does that look like? So I faked it and then it became mm -hmm. who I am. So, um, get everything in writing too. Don't spend a lot of time with buyers that you are not having that buyer agency uh, meeting with, because that could be a colossal waste of your time. And I think if we're new, we're not feeling confident about ourselves and why would they want to sign by your agency with you or with me? If I'm really a brand new agent, you've got to, you've got to shed that thought. 
uh, because you are a professional, you don't work for free and um, you, you want to get that in writing as soon as you can. So if it's scripts and role playing that you need to do in order to get that signed, then, then, you know, that's where you need to start. It, it's a, it's a given. I don't work with buyers unless they have buyer agency sign with me because they can walk into an open house next week mm -hmm. and sign with someone else. And all of that time with those people you could have spent with someone else that is going to sign a buyer agency and close a deal. So, um, Another thing I learned too is don't spend the money until it closes. Yep. <laughs> okay. In your mind, you're like, oh my gosh, this is going to be great. Yeah. I can do this and this. Don't, don't go there. It's not over until it closes. Yep. So um, another one is effort doesn't always equal a sale. So again, it's your intentions and how you're working. If you're you know, again, working for, with someone to find the perfect home and you don't have buyer agency, your efforts may not be rewarded with a monetary, a monetary reward. You may not get that. So um, be mindful of how you're spending your day and the things that you have in writing to protect yourself. Um, having a mentor, right, Connie? Yep. Who is it that you go to? It might be one, two, three people. Who is your tribe? Who, mm -hmm. who was your, who was your, I mean, I know you were in productivity, but besides like your productivity, me and your tribe, who else did you go to, Connie? I had um, Morgan as my mentor and okay. I called her for everything. And I did showings for her because she, she traveled a lot. So I just, I did her showings for her all the time. Um, gave her a heads up on what was going on. She was always there to review my contracts to, um, you know, what do I do with this? I mean, and even when I started some of the simple computer things, how do I make something into a PDF? I mean, I, I wasn't a big computer person. I, I know it's, you guys are looking at me and laughing, but I, I'm more of a, yeah, I did amazing hair. And hands on, but you know, when you put everything into dot looper into anything, it had to be a PDF. And I know you guys are gonna laugh, but I don't know how to make something into a PDF. You know, oh Connie, all you do is hit print and then save as PDF. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's the simple little things, but it's nice to have somebody to bounce things off of. And some people are more techy than others, some people are more computer oriented, some people are um, better with the social media. I now use my daughter for social media. So anything that you guys see, it's really, I'm not that cool. <laughs> and some of the pictures she puts up and, but I'm yeah. using my resources because I'll get a text from somebody and go, oh my gosh, what the heck up? And, uh, and then I have to look at like, Maddie, yeah, you're really close to that line. You really got to watch that because she's 21. And <laughs> um, yeah, I know people yeah. would be seeing, I'm like, we got to watch that line. <laughs> But I mean, some of them are really funny. And then she puts things in on how to, I don't know, how to use lemons to clean your house. She finds all kinds of fun things. And if you're not good at it, find somebody who is. Yeah. And then I just, I pay her by transaction. If I don't close anything, she doesn't get paid. <laughs> I like that. So, yeah, I mean, you I just, found that when something closes. Yeah consistency is the key for you. You have someone that is consistently doing that. So it's yes. not like it's happening one week and then, you know, next week you're going to do something else. You have someone that is consistently doing your social yeah. media for you. Yeah. Two days a week. She does, um, Instagram and Facebook twice, twice a week and she knows how to schedule it. So honestly, she doesn't even work that hard. Um, <laughs> she sets it all up. I think a couple, two, three, four weeks in advance. I have no idea. She's really good at command though. <laughs> so she sets everything up and then um, she makes all my open house posts, sends all those out. Yeah, you can schedule things to go out, but you know, you got to figure that out and it's just not my gig. Right. So find somebody who is. I Honey, I have that. a question for you. This is Melissa. Yeah. 
Do you have um, a personal Facebook page and a business Facebook page? And if so, what do you post most of your things to? I post everything on my business page. And then what I usually do is I'll share it on my personal page. Okay. And then I do have a couple of um, pages uh, like Waksha, Waksha County for Sale is mine and I let everybody go on it. So other realtors put it on there, but I am the admin on that. And I just okay. let that one ride, but I'm tagged on everything in there then, which is kind of nice. And then um, there, I have a lake site too. <laughs> lake, lake Homes for Sale in Waukesha County is actually my site. And I let everybody post things on there also. So, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm connected with those, even though it's been hard to get you know, lake listings, other people put it on. And I picked up many buyers from that site because people want to buy homes. The problem is just finding them out. Okay. Great. Thank um, you. How about um, one, of the, one of the sayings that I have and it has helped me is being comfortable with being uncomfortable. So that is in my daily schedule. Every single day, from the moment I started even studying for my real estate license, I knew that I was going to be extremely uncomfortable every day. And I'm an extrovert, so it may look like things are just comfortable for me, but everything is uncomfortable every single day. And you have got to swallow that and take it in and move forward, especially those who might be and it's different for everybody. If you're an introvert and you're very technically based and you're a detailed orientated person, it may be harder for you to actually go out there and make that transaction happen. You might be stuck in the transactional part of the process. And so therefore you're sitting there stuck in your mind because it's uncomfortable for you to get out there and move forward. You have to realize that in yourself and you're going to have to be very uncomfortable moving forward. The true, that same goes with someone who is socially um, talkative and, you know, is an extrovert what might be holding you back then potentially is the contractual part of the transaction of, I don't understand the contracts as much as I think I should. I don't feel comfortable with it and therefore I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're stuck with, whatever that I'm uncomfortable with, that's holding you back, you need to challenge yourself every single day to remove yourself from where you're at. And I can tell you that for me, it was the technical part and the transaction part. All, all of the, the hoops and the, and the procedures, I understood them, but I, I don't, I didn't love the details. And this is a very detailed business. So I had to go and get very uncomfortable with myself and learn that part of the business. For some of you, that's the easiest part. And the hardest part for you is to actually get into motion, go to open houses, showing property. If you don't shift into that uncomfortable part of whoever you are, you will be stuck. Mm -hmm. be stuck. So it's really, that I think is the most important thing that we have to grasp right away is realizing what we are not great at and what we are, are uncomfortable with and then facing it head on because it's all in our mind. Yeah. Um, and keep in mind that, you know, there are a lot of things that are out of your control. It's yeah. our job to do them. Um, and <laughs> this week, one of the, one of the worst, the, one of the biggest things that I hate doing, and, and I know it's a very strong word, is presenting an offer that is absolutely awful. You know, you'll get something and it's like, really? And the agent actually called me and she says, I am so sorry. 
I am so sorry I wrote this, but this is what the buyer wants. 75,000 below asking. It, you know, and it's like, and I sat there and I looked at it and I'm like, it's my job to present this. How, how am I going to do this? And the seller's not going to look at me like I'm not doing my job because it's overpriced. It's above, but you know, there are things that happen that you don't want to do that you have to do. And I just said, you know, this is not, it's a good phone call, but it's not going to be a good one. And just kind of and roll with things. You, you have to follow through and you have to do things. The same thing when you get an inspection back, that is absolutely awful. There's nothing worse than calling those sellers and saying, hey, I know that this is your pride and joy, but the inspection came back and it's kind of a piece of shit. I mean, you can't use that verbiage, but when you have this inspection that the, the host is basically, and depending on the inspector, of course, and depending on the buyers, of course, I've seen some inspections, you would think that the house is falling down. But, you know, anything can be fixed. Depends on how much you want to spend. And it, that's the hardest part for me is, is working with the sellers when, when they have so much time and money invested in this. And it, it makes my stomach turn. <laughs> yeah, see, that's your thing. That would not bother me at all. Really? I Not at all. Oh. Because I don't take it personally. I'm going to call that agent that wrote that, that lowball offer and say, where are you coming from with this? So then I can help explain it to the seller. I need to know what the, what the thought process is so I can wrap mm -hmm. my head around it and then I can present it. But see, everyone has their, their thing. Um, having systems in place is really important. So knowing the system of a transaction is super important. Even if you have a transactional manager who's from focus or whoever, if you're on a team and they're, they're taking over that system for you. You need to know it because your clients are going to ask you and you need to know what that system is. So, so know that system. Um, I always say, choose one, two, three people that you are going to follow in this business, in this market center, and then put your blinders on everyone else. So, you know, Find two or three people that you want to reach out to that you like how their style is that, you know, you, you want to emulate and put your blinders on everybody else because you're going to go nuts. If you're asking 10 people the same question, you're going to get 10 different answers. I know that if I, I have two or three people myself that I will reach out and say, this is so bizarre. I'm not even sure how to handle this. Mm -hmm. And I know those people are and Connie, you're one of them. Um, and I, I know that they think like I do and they may have a different opinion on some things that's going to help me, but their, their business style, they're, they're more like me. And I, I trust that. So pick a couple people and honestly go with it and put your blinders on to everybody else. Um, Get off the island is something else that I always think about is, you know, if you want to find out what your future is, then look at your closest five friends. And that goes for your, your five business friends too. align with people who are more successful than yourself. That's who you want to be with. That's who you want in your circle. Always up the game. And that goes into your personal life too. I mean, who you're hanging out with is really who your future is. Um, another big thing is mastering your scripts. If you don't have scripts for a buyer presentation, a listing presentation, how you are presenting an offer, that's huge. Um, how you're working with buyers, that's huge. Then you are literally making it up and that becomes your script. So you already have a script, make it so it's impactful and just go onto the KW education sites. There's tons of scripts. We have shared the open house script a thousand times. Um, I'm going to tell you one of the mistakes that I constantly am biting my tongue with and it just, I did it again and I'm aware of it. And I can't, I mean, it's like, Oh my God, I can't believe it. 
Um, I had a buyer reach out to me. They were looking in one particular area and then they didn't get it. We lost out in it. Then they went to another particular area, completely the opposite of what they were looking at before. And they told me exactly that they were looking for a tight knit neighborhood, you know, walkability to schools, blah, blah, blah. The house that they wanted to look at was the second one, completely the opposite. It was out in the middle of nowhere. It was a busy street. It was everything they said they didn't want. I said, okay, you guys, let's go ahead and take a look at it. But these are my thoughts. I should have never said that because we go into the house and they absolutely loved it. So they didn't ask for my opinion and I told it to them. I should have kept my mouth shut. Just like when I'm showing property, I keep my mouth shut. Let them have that experience. So I'm learning is what I'm saying is that I see this mistakes and things that I say that I shouldn't and just make note to self. I'm not buying the house. They are. Yeah. Um, customer service starts right off the bat. If you are not giving a hundred percent customer service right away, you're not going to have a client for life. So create an amazing experience. Connie, what are some of the things that you do to create amazing customer service, client experience for your buyers or sellers that you um, do that you don't see other people doing? I just really keep in contact with everybody and follow through. Um, I take notes because a lot of times you're not going to remember certain things and whatever is very important to them. I bring up often like their kids or their dog. I write down yeah. the kids' names. I write down the dog's names because that's, that's what's close to people's heart and that's what they like. Um, I have one couple that I think I lost because we can't find a house and we've been looking for five months. So now they signed a year lease, but their little son, Leo, oh my God, I want him so bad. I want to take him home with me. <laughs> but you know, every time we'd come to a house to see it, Leo would be so excited and run up to the house and I would say hi to Leo before I would say hi to the parents. Just because, I mean, they are this great family with these two little boys and Leo always wanted to come and see Connie's house. So <laughs> I just yeah. kind of, you know, can we go see Connie's house again? Does Connie have another house? You know, right. and it was just, just working with the family and, you know, they're, they're laying low now. And I'm really, really sad because I kind of miss seeing Leo every week. <laughs> Uh, but the, you know, the, the husband and wife are, they're just sweethearts, but I'm still sending them properties. I'm still touching base with them on Friday. I send a text. Um, I hope you're going to have a great weekend. Here are some new properties coming on. I'm just going to keep you guys informed because they will buy a house, but they were just overwhelmed with, I mean, we wrote an offer of 21,000 over and didn't get it with yeah. no inspection with, you know, it's, it's hard. But keeping it in contact with people and, and bringing that personal side into it is, is how I work with people. And I think that's just to kind of spear off a little bit is how keeping these buyers engaged when they're missing out on offer after offer. And now they're feeling like, why should I even write an offer if I'm, comp if I'm competing with 10 other people? How are we holding our buyers together mentally in order for them to still be in the game is there any trick that you that you have that you do i just set them up um when we first start that you know the market is crazy right now we don't have a lot of inventory um we're waiting for inventory to start rolling around we definitely will find you a house at one point in time but most likely we're going to lose out on a couple and especially first time home buyers, you know, they don't have the extra money to bring to the closing table. They have to have an appraisal. They, you know, unless if it's, yeah, a home inspection is quite important. Unless if, you know, the one that we did without a home inspection, I would normally never write a first time home buyer without an inspection, but his dad was there. He's owned rental properties and he walked through the whole entire house and looked at the furnace and looked at the roof and then I felt comfortable with it. And I told the dad, I said, you know, I, I do not normally do this for first time home buyers, but if you're comfortable with it, I'm comfortable with it. 
and we have to do coming right back to what we have to do what they want right but in the email when i sent them the offer to sign i did put in there and we do not have a home inspection just so you have a paper trail on it because if something should happen and they come back and say well i didn't know about the home inspection i was confused this is my first house you really want to make sure that you have that in writing yes you know what I have seen a little bit is that the sellers are doing pre-home inspections, which brilliant. And then the um, listing agent is saying, here is the pre-home inspection and basically encouraging you to this inspection and then waiving inspection. Um, I thought that was an interesting take on it. So let's shift now because we're gonna, we'll end with talking about acceleration clauses. And for some of you, I know if Bridget's still on here, I don't know if she is. Um, yeah, um, having writing an acceleration, in a, uh, writing an offer with an acceleration clause and then being on the receiving end as a listing agent with an acceleration clause. So, does everyone that's on here understand what an acceleration clause is? Everyone does. Okay. And so Bridget, I'm going to use you as an example. You had a property that had how many offers? 49. I, that's what? Okay. How? Let's talk to Bridget about this then. Bridget, how did you navigate 49 offers with your seller or for yourself? My God. I made a spreadsheet. I started to do offers in command, but this was just too much. I needed a spreadsheet. And um, there, it was interesting to see everything that everyone was doing. But basically with 49 offers, it was too much to handle after I was like going through each offer and typing every single detail into my spreadsheet, I realized, well, first I should look over all the offers and then maybe one stands out and we'll make all this. So then I started, if it was like only 10 K over asking or whatever, like those, I was just putting some details in. And then after I had everything in my spreadsheet, I got the top like five offers and I put them in a new spreadsheet. And then when I sat down with them, I talked to them about those five more in depth and then just kind of like also reviewed the others obviously and presented them, but just kind of showed them those five and why I thought those were the best offers. And out of the five, I, you know, had one offer that I thought was the one we should choose. And what set that offer apart from anyone else? So for my sellers they were really worried about it appraising so some of the offers were crazy for a thousand square foot home in west dallas it just would never appraise for 55k asking um, and then on top of that i was surprised how many people just throw out the inspection completely i guess i just had no idea that that many people are comfortable doing that so that was eye-opening um, in the end, we picked the offer that was the cleanest, just very like clean, concise. It, there were a lot of escalation clauses. This one did not have one. It was just like their highest and best. They were covering 10 grand of the appraisal gap. Um, and they were letting us look for a month. so there was just like a lot of nice pieces. It all made sense. Whereas others were just getting a little too like, well then this, but this, and this, but this, and then, and in the end, when you have that many offers, I think that's also made the difference that it was like, let's just pick this one, normal, nice realtor, normal, nice lender, normal offer, normal, normal, normal. I don't know. And the offer that you accepted, did you have a conversation with that agent or did she reach out to you when she sent the offer over? And what was that conversation? Because everyone who listened to this, this is going to be you. She called me twice over the weekend. I was also surprised to see how many people never reached out, but then like just shot over offers. I was 
shocked. And then she took the time to ask me what was more most important. And that really helped her, I think, craft the best offer. Right. So you guys, it's not necessarily the price. I think sellers get very nervous when they see these really high prices coming through. And there is absolutely no backup for appraisal. Unless it's cash, no appraisal, no inspection. You know, that, that high price isn't necessarily going to get you that home. It is the terms and the conversation that you have with that, with that agent. So um, we just have to be very careful with that. Um, acceleration clauses are not necessarily going to get you that house. And sometimes I, as a, if I'm working with a buyer, I will have a conversation with that listing agent and say, what are the most important things to this seller? And then I will probably go back to my buyer and say, let's write the cleanest, best offer that we can. And you know that if you do not get it, you're not, you're going to be okay with it because you are literally at your maximum. And some sellers do get discouraged when they see an acceleration clause come through and their mindset is, well, why didn't they just go ahead and offer that price to begin with? Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a real case by case scenario, but don't think that that's going to get you that, that house. If you're, if you're way overboard, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen. I think the sellers are because more educated. What do you think, Han? Well, keep in mind also when you're writing that accelerate acceleration clause, call the listing agent and make sure they know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us about it? Yes, because um, you know, if they don't know what it is, they won't appreciate that those buyers can go higher. And then I'll usually tell them, you know. We're writing an offer with an acceleration clause because the buyers really love, absolutely love the house. They don't want to lose it, but if they can have extra money in hand to redo that kitchen, it'll really help them out. And that's why we're doing the acceleration clause mm -hmm. and, you know, stating that because there are many people who don't know what that acceleration clause is. So I know nobody responded on that. Everybody knows what it is. But um, with your acceleration clause, what it is, is you're, you will pay $300,000 for the house up to say $330,000 right. in 500 or $1,000 increments. And then what happens is the, you are going up against that other offer. The listing agent has to send the buyer's proof of that offer for their price. The seller. The, the, the seller, yes, the seller sends that offer to the buyer as proof on what that purchase price is brought up to. Right. Right. And if you don't feel comfortable writing an offer with that clause, you need to be comfortable yep. with writing that clause. And as a listing agent, you need to be comfortable into deciphering it. Because if you have four or five acceleration clauses, and you're presenting, it can get really tricky. So I spend a lot of time looking at those, understanding it, and if you don't quite get it, then ask somebody to look at it with you because sometimes it can get very weedy. Um, so Bridget, just, did you have somebody go through all those offers with you? Yes, Andy Stillman. Okay, I, I mean, at 49, I would grab a friend. That's a lot. I'd grab a village. Yeah, yeah Katie yeah. had five in her spinning. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think too, just if you're working with buyers, which typically you are going to be when you first start out, that's going to be your your start. Those buyers are going to turn into sellers at one point in time. Um, be very, very knowledgeable about how the offer works. Be very knowledgeable about feeling comfortable, I guess, calling that co-broke. I am like you, Bridget. I cannot believe how many offers I'm getting where they're just plunked into my email and there is absolutely no conversation. 
how rude, number one. And number two, am I going to want to work with you? You don't even pick up the phone and call me or text me. Um, already, I'm, I'm feeling that there's going to be a lack of communication on the other side. So, you know, over communicate, but don't also be one of those agents that, you know, I think I probably was last week on something I wrote on, but uh, how many offers do you have? You know, listen, I, a lot. I don't have to, I mean, honestly, you do not have to tell them. Um, I always say, write your best offer. This is what I'm presenting and leave it at that. Um, you don't have to tell them anything other than write your best offer, obviously. Here are the timelines that the seller's looking for, so on and so forth. So just be careful with that. So I wanted, I thought we wanted to touch on the, on the clauses because I think there might be some confusion. Um, and then getting back to your daily business. You know, if you can get to the office or if you have a place in your house where it is your office, dress up. I, I mean, I can't work really well when I'm working in my sweatpants. Um, that's just me. I have to I have to feel really good and professional. Um, but that's me. I have to have my environment together and I have to have a schedule and I will get that um, schedule out. If you guys want to text me your email address, and Connie, I'll send you one as well so you can share it. Um, I will send you out that it's a blank schedule that we use, that I use, and then I put it into my phone. Um, we And I also have a phone calendar. And I'll just kind of share, like, that's my, that's my world, wherever my camera is. And I put everything in there. <laughs> and it did, I mean, when I first started, it was blank, but I filled it up. From 9 until 1030, I'm writing five handwritten notes. Um, I know mega agents that do that. Um, I talked to him. I'm like, how do you, he's not even with our company. Very relational, very, um, uh, just very driven with relationships that he has. And I said, how do you, what do you do to stay in contact? He's not very big on social media at all. That's not his thing. But he said, Janine, when I run into somebody at the store or I think of them, I write, I think he writes five handwritten notes every single morning. He starts his day at 730 at his office. And that's how he starts the day. And that's how he, that's his language of keeping in touch. I think, you know, whatever works for you, um, then do it. And if you don't feel comfortable doing it, do it anyway. And if you don't have time to do it, then you um, find someone that can do it for you. Um, Connie, what's on for next week? We are doing... Oh, I can't hear you. Because I'm muted. Uh, next week. Gotta find the notes. I know. I, I don't um, know where my next week is the 15th. We will be doing A to Z building your database and love 10 minutes of weekend. I love this one. Yeah, that's a fun one. So for those mm -hmm. of you that are stuck, for those of you that don't have a sphere, even if you do, it's really for everybody. I do this exercise every time I'm feeling like I don't see where the next the next lead's coming from. And I literally think to myself, you know, how am I going to make this work? I do the A to Z exercise and I guarantee you, you will have one or two transactions from next week's um, class. It works. Mm -hmm. It works. Does anyone have any questions? Anybody questions? I was just wondering okay. what your phone number was so I can text you. Oh, it's, I'll put it in here, but it's 414-617-9016. Awesome, thank you. You are welcome.
Okay. Good deal. All right. Well, stay dry. And if I am doing uh, three open houses this weekend. I'm doing one tonight and I'm doing one Saturday and one Sunday. And if you want to text me, if anyone wants to shadow me, I, my goal on every open house is to procure a buyer, find a buyer and a seller. I, so I'm hoping through this weekend that I will pick up. My goal is three buyers and three sellers. It's the same house. I'm doing Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, uh, tonight from 4:30 to six Saturday and Sunday from, uh, mm, mm, I believe it's 12 to 1.30 in Glendale. So uh, remember you guys, shadow people, learn from others. If you don't have business, then follow some people around and ask to help them. Awesome, cool. Have a good week. Okay. Bye. <laughs>